our first conic we are going to study is going to be the circle. And the graphing form of a circle is x minus h plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Major things you need to recall. The center and the center of any conic is at h comma k. So it's whatever I'm subtracting from x, whatever I am subtracting from k. Quick example up at the top here. If I had x plus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared equals 4, in that situation, that's telling me that my x-coordinate of my center is not at 2, because it's minus h, so it's always the opposite. It's at negative 2. And my y-coordinate, since it's y minus k, I have y minus, that means k is 1, there's my center. The second thing that's involved here is my radius. The radius is r, but note, I don't give you r, or your equation doesn't give you r, it gives you r squared. So you always have to take the square root of whatever your equation is equal to to get your radius. In the example up at the top, my radius is not 4. It's 2. It's the square root of 4. So taking that into account, I can go ahead and look at these equations and, well, look at what we have here. It's the exact equation that we just talked about with subtraction and addition switched. It gives me the center of this circle at 2, negative 1, with a radius of 2. So you have to identify the center from x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and that equals r squared to work down. When I'm graphing this, I plot the center at 2, negative 1, and apply the radius. The radius is the same all the way around a circle. When I'm graphing a circle, you're, technically there's an infinite number of points. I only need to see you graph 4. Go from your center and apply the radius to the right, 2, down 2 in this case, left 2, and up 2. That's going to be your circle. You can sketch it. Just make sure it looks something like a circle. That's not perfect by any stretch, but that's good enough for me. Don't make it a square. Don't make it a rectangle. Don't make it a diamond. Have some edges and some curves on that. Go ahead, press pause, and try the example to the right. So we should have found the center to be at negative 6, 2, and the radius of 4. Negative 6 comes from my x plus 6, the 2 comes from my y minus 2, and the radius is the square root of 16. I graphed my center, I went 4 right, 4 down, 4 left, 4 up, and connected my curve. So that's how we graph as long as we have our equation in graphing form. However, Oftentimes, our equation is not going to be provided to us in graphing form. In order to make our equation in graphing form, we need to use the skill we just learned in our previous videos, and that is to complete the square. So this first example here is going to be talking about how do I do that. Well, I'm actually going to complete the square twice here. What I want you to recognize is that you have x squared and an x. I'm not going to completely do combine them because they're not like terms, but they're similar terms because they both have x. I'm going to group those together. x squared plus 2x. I also have a y squared and a y term. I'm going to leave some space after my x because I'm going to have a square that needs to be completed here, and then put my y squared minus 8y in leave some space after that, and have it equal 8. That's my equals 8 here. Okay. Again, the reason I'm doing that is I need to complete the square two times now. First, I have to complete this square. x squared plus 2x plus c. What's c to make this a perfect square? Well, I take my positive 2, divide it by 2, I get 1, square that, and I get 1. So I have to add 1 here. If I add 1 on the left, I add 1 on the right. That allows me to rewrite this as x plus 1 
quantity squared. So I'm just grouping my x's, completing the square. By adding one here, I have to add one there to keep my equation balanced. Same idea here, but I have a negative 8. Again, if I just do this off to the side, this is what we're doing. Negative 8 divided by 2 squared. That's negative 4 squared is positive 16. That means add 16 here, add 16 here. This is an addition problem, and I have a perfect square. It's y in my parentheses here after I simplify this fraction is negative 4, so it's y minus 4 quantity squared. All of that equals 8 plus 1 plus 16, or 25. I now have my equation in graphing form. I can find my center. x plus 1 means my x coordinate is negative 1, plus y minus 4 means my y coordinate is positive 4, and both of those are squared. The radius squared is 25, that makes the radius 5. At that point, I'd be able to go ahead and graph it. Let's do one more of those type together. On the first problem on the next page. It's the same idea with a slight difference. I still have an x squared that I will group with my x to write x squared plus 8x. I'm going to leave some space and put my y squared, but I don't have a y to group with it. So I can't do anything else with that. The other issue is I have a constant on the left. When I'm completing the square, I want that constant on the right. So if I subtract 7 from both sides, that's going to give me an equals negative 7 on the right-hand side. And so I did two things there. I grouped my like variables, x's, my y's. I also moved my constant to the right. When I have this situation now, I want to complete the square for any time I have an x squared and an x. So that's 8 divided by 2 squared is 4 squared is 16. That means I add 16 here, add 16 here. This is now a perfect square trinomial and when I factor it, I get x plus 4 quantity squared. Plus, if I don't have a y, I just have the y squared, I can just leave it as y squared. I don't need to complete the square. I can't complete the square. But that's telling me is, and of course when I add negative 7 and 16, I get 9, that my center is at negative 4, comma, if I don't have a y plus something squared or y minus something squared, my y coordinate is 0. Because I could technically rewrite this as y plus 0 quantity squared. Same thing. I just don't have to write it that way. My radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. Go ahead, press pause. Take a couple of minutes now to practice this concept on numbers 1 and 2. Both of them are going to be have similarities to examples 1 and 2, but in both cases you're definitely going to have to move your constant to the right. So go ahead, press pause, and try those now, please. So in the first example, when we group my x's, I get x minus 7 squared when I complete that square. Group my y's, complete the square, I get y minus 6 squared. I had a negative 81, I had to add my 49 from completing the square of x, add my 36 from completing the square of y, combine all of this, I get 4. Center is at 7, 6, radius is at 2. And for our last one, we should find the center to be negative 3, negative 2, and the radius 4. If you didn't get either of those, please try to follow my work to see how I grouped, how I completed the square, make sure you combined or you added to both sides. And again, if you have questions, make sure you ask me. The last topic for today is writing the equation of a circle. 
Okay. Now, if I give you the center and the radius, the work isn't too hard. It's always x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Well, in this case, I give you your h is 8, your k is negative 9, and your r squared is 11 squared, or 121. So it's a matter of plugging in what I know. x minus h means x minus 8. y minus k means y minus negative 9. That makes it y plus 9. r squared is 121. Second example on the bottom here, I didn't give you your center or your radius, but you can find them. Center is going to be, if I go straight down here, go straight over here, that is the center of my circle. That is at negative 5, 2. Look at your two diameters where they intersect is your center. Radiuses then count from your center to one of to the radius, to the side, to the edge. One, two, three, four is your radius. Okay. Well that means h is negative five, k is two, and r squared is sixteen. My equation then is x plus five, because minus negative five squared plus y minus two squared equals sixteen. Okay. Press pause and try that example up at the top right if you haven't done it already. So we get x plus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 7 quantity squared equals 64. That's the expectation for circles. The major thing there is going to be not just the being able to pick the information from your equation, but also write your equation given the information. Those are the two big skills. The one skill that is required to leads into that is having to complete the square. That's oftentimes where this gets a little bit tricky, so make sure you focus your studying on that part as well.